update meeting. Uh, Charles, the floor is all yours. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for listening. I'm Charles Hoskinson, the Chief Executive Officer of IOHK. This is our first Cardano update meeting. Joining us, we have uh, kind of a nice sampling of people who are working on the Cardano project from uh, technologists to marketers to uh, communications people. And our hope here is to provide some clarity, answer some questions, and some context about uh, how we've been building Cardano and the future. So let's start at the beginning. Cardano started uh, uh, full-time development uh, around September where we aggregated in Latvia uh, and we had uh, several protocols that the scientists had finally signed off on, um, Ouroboros being the most significant. So uh, from there, we started construction of uh, various different prototypes to explore uh, potential architectures and we were also trying to get a sense of how quickly we could ship things and what tools we wanted to work with. Uh, we chose on the back of that event uh, to start with Haskell, and uh, we have been enjoying that decision for quite some time now, and we've certainly overcome a lot of great challenges. Uh, in particular, we had to deal with uh, some of the immaturity that Haskell has for enterprise software. We've also had to deal with uh, making Haskell applications work in a distributed environment. Furthermore, because most of our protocols and, uh, are bespoke, uh, the first time one would introduce them uh, uh, is, uh, is, is uh, causing some issues from here and there. But those have been resolved. Uh, we certainly have uh, grown quite a bit. We've now gone through five releases. The first release occurred in January. Uh, the second release occurred in February. Uh, the third release quite, took quite a bit of time. We were able to get it out in April. Uh, the fourth release was internal, and the fifth release uh, happened just about a week ago. Uh, through this entire process, we've gone from a client that had very minimal functionality, uh, but people were able to connect to, to a nearly fully featured client that has a lot of first, uh, uh, our belief is it's actually the first production Haskell client in the cryptocurrency space uh, that's actually usable and uh, sustains an entire cryptocurrency. Uh, it's the first um, implementation of ED25519 elliptic curve for HD wallets. Um, I think it's the first time anybody's tried to wire a Haskell application up to Electron in the cryptocurrency space and use that as a full-featured wallet. That's pretty extensible. Uh, and we've, uh, we've certainly learned a lot in that process. Uh, there are still some bugs and issues. Um, and the purpose of Testnet 5 wasn't to release the production product, but more of a product that finally would give us a closer relationship with the uh, ADA community and give them an opportunity to help us with the debugging mm -hmm. effort. Uh, the reality of software development is that uh, there are thousands and thousands of different computer configurations. You have uh, Windows computers and Mac computers and many different types of hardware profiles. Some people have desktops, some people have laptops. And while we do a really good job with test tr coverage trying to uh, imagine all the different possibilities, the, at the end of the day, the only way to be certain that the software works on most configurations is to simply test it. And the best way of doing that is to involve the community. So I'd personally like to thank the thousands of people who have downloaded, installed, and used uh, the Cardano testnet over the last five iterations. I'd also like to thank them for their enormous patience and uh, their positive attitude, especially when things didn't work. I have very fond memories of being in Shanghai when the first uh, testnet launched and getting messages in Chinese uh, about uh, people not being able to install their client on Windows or this, that, and the other, and trying to debug it over WeChat, which was a heck of a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed that. And, and I'd just like to thank you for your patience. On the uh, business side of things, uh, a little bit of housekeeping. So the Cardano sale ended uh, at the end of January of 2017. Uh, we had a one month glide month to go ahead and uh, audit the closing of the sale, process a few refunds, as well as uh, some database reconciliation. In March of 2017, uh, that's when the process of ADA vending began. So the ADA vending machine was turned on and over a 21-day period, about 93% of all of the ADA buyers vended. The remaining 7% were uh, what we call force vended, meaning uh, that a vending certificate was constructed on their behalf and uh, sent to the email address they provided at the time of sale. The vast majority of people on both the force vend and the uh, uh, regular vending side 
uh, agreed to recovery service, and the recovery service will be coming online uh, sometime soon, we hope. Uh, at the very least, we hope to get some form of registration set up for people who have issues with their certificates, whether they be corrupted or anything else. So uh, after vending concluded, uh, testnet 3 was the first testnet to actually include the ownership genesis block, basically who owned what, where, and give people the ability to redeem their ADA. Some statistics, about 3,000 redemption transactions have occurred. Uh, which gives us a high degree of assurance that vending was done correctly. And there's been some people who have had issues here and there, and we've been trying to resolve them. Um, it is very important uh, that if a person has purchased data, that they attempt to redeem their data on the testnet, uh, because this will guarantee if you can do that, uh, give you a high degree of confidence that you should be able to do that on the mainnet. And uh, right now, during the testnet phase, uh, we have a lot of uh, ability to change things and fix things and correct things as they come up. After uh, Cardano has launched and the mainnet is, uh, is live and trading has begun, uh, the amount of options we have goes down considerably because it's a live cryptocurrency and we can't tinker with monetary policy or void certificates or things like that. No one has that power, not IOHK, not the Cardano Foundation, or else that would defeat the entire purpose of, of it being a cryptocurrency. So as generous as the community has been with its time, we are personally asking them to be a bit more generous. And, and please, please, if you haven't already done so, download Daedalus, let us know how it works, and try to redeem your certificate so that we have a high degree of assurance that, uh, uh, that that's not going to be a problem for you. The amounts are correct, and there aren't any other issues there. Um, some other housekeeping items. Uh, it's important to know that uh, Daedalus is going to be uh, at launch a desktop and laptop only application. It will not work on a cell phone, and this is by design. Uh, we want the first generation of the protocol to focus on full nodes and build up a large population there. A light client will come out sometime, we hope, this year. Uh, but for now, this release, uh, when the mainnet comes out, it will only work on Windows and Mac, and at some point in the future, we'll start supporting um, Linux, and we'll probably shortly after the Windows and Mac builds come out. Uh, another point is that 32-bit um, Windows support uh, is still ongoing, and we're having some discussions about how to do that. And I also believe that Windows XP is not supported. So um, any operating system beyond Windows XP in the Windows family, 64-bit is supported, and would encourage you, if you have a device like that, to install it. And the uh, same for Mac OS. Um, so that's basically some housekeeping, uh, and that's um, a story about the long journey that we've been on. I think we've written more lines of Haskell code than we care to admit, and we've done a lot of debugging, uh, and we've certainly grown a lot as a project. IOHK now has three research centers, one at University of Edinburgh, one at University of Athens, where I actually happen to be right now. I'm currently in Athens, Greece for the day, uh, and also one at Tokyo Tech. We have a lot of cryptographers doing various things. Ouroboros, the heart of Cardano, has already gone through five revisions. And actually, Ouroboros has um, already been accepted for peer review at Crypto17, making it the first uh, cryptocurrency protocol in the proof-of-stake family to be accepted at a major cryptographic conference for peer review. This is a very significant accomplishment. So if anybody happens to be in Santa Barbara in August, we'd love to see you there. It's uh, crypto is one of the largest cryptography conferences. It's very difficult to get papers submitted there accepted, and the reviewers tend to be very... Um, rigorous in their review of people's papers. So we're very proud that our work has, uh, has gotten there. Uh, we continue the effort and we'll probably continue to publish new editions of Ouroboros as we get more feedback to optimize the protocol, to make it faster, more scalable, to reduce latency. For example, we've got many questions about uh, what is our block time and how many transactions per second uh, can we get? And you know these questions are to a time frame. Currently, our block time on the testnet is 120 seconds per block, which is considerably shorter than Bitcoin. And our hope is when the mainnet launches to be able to get this down to 20 seconds per block. But future versions of our protocol should permit even uh, shorter block times, perhaps even less than five seconds. So our, our hope is to keep pushing that as much as we can. And it requires uh, you know, some creative thinking, but we think we can get there. As for the transaction per second rate, uh, we actually have two benchmark sets. The production grade, which is what we're launching with the mainnet, we're erring on the side of caution here. 
So we're trying to keep it around Bitcoin uh, and over time we'll open it up as uh, later editions of the software come out. So 10, 15 transactions per second is what should be expected. And that's been able to maintain a network of Bitcoin size for quite some time. Um, in the lab, using our Rust implementation, uh, we've seen a TPS rate above 80 uh, transactions per second, uh, which bodes very well for the design of the protocol. We feel we probably can get it faster. And these are for a single shard. If one was the shard, we probably could get better performance. So this will be a major area of uh, design and research uh, going into 2018. Another common set of questions we get is when will we be able to have smart contracts on Cardano? Um, and so it is important to discuss this for just a moment. First, uh, with respect to smart contracts, the Cardano model is to layer them. So on the base level, the main net, what's coming out, uh, we do support limited programmability. And we have a lot of ideas on how to get a very rich and dynamic system off of a very simple language. But at some point, people are going to want to program their own smart contracts and deploy them. So for this, we've chosen to abstract that out to a separate protocol and then construct a side chain between these two protocols. We call that Cardano CL, Cardano Computation Layer. Uh, or control layer. We've used both terms in our literature. And there, we are, our hope is to have an improved version of the Ethereum virtual machine running and uh, several uh, options for programmers to use, from legacy languages like Solidity to new languages like Plutus, which were based on Haskell. Uh, when I say improved version of the Ethereum virtual machine, we've already begun that research and have been doing so for quite some time. We have a large research team we're working with out of University of Illinois, Urbana Chapin, led by Professor Gregory Rosu. Uh, and he and his students have actually formalized the EVM using a framework called K. So they have the operational semantics of the EVM available. And this has given us a great degree of insight into what one should do to redesign the Ethereum virtual machine to be more secure, faster, more efficient, and also easier to build tooling for, such as verified compilers. Um, the aggregation of our first wave of research will be a paper we're submitting to Popol, which is a major conference for programming languages. And over the summer and entering into the winter, we'll begin building prototypes. And our hope is to have uh, an EVM 2.0 uh, ready sometime early in Q1 of 2018. Uh, this said, uh, we have other computational models for Cardano, specifically for uh, games of chance uh, or any of these things, our hope is to actually build a collection of overlay protocols using special purpose multi-party computation protocols. Uh, and this research is currently ongoing by Bernardo David and his team out of uh, Tokyo Tech. And we, and at some point we'll uh, publish those results on ePrint. And then we'll begin the process of implementing a prototype. But I believe we should have probably something reasonable within three months to six months that we can uh, port onto the network and um, use. The final area of computation we're very interested in is the marriage of trusted hardware with our protocol, namely stuff from the Intel SGX and the ARM Trust Zone uh, um, ecosystems. ARM Trust Zone tends to live in cell phones because it's deployed with the ARM processor. And Intel SGX is supported in every Intel chip uh, beyond Intel Skylake. Um, basically, these are special circuits built into the hardware itself that give you the ability to do things that you can't do in normal hardware and to make assumptions about behavior that you can't make from normal hardware. Um, in the first iteration, our hope is to use this technology for porting overlay protocols like Lightning and Raiden, which will give us much higher performance and low-cost microtransactions. But in later generations, our hope is to combine these uh, special hardware with uh, a technique called sealed glass proofs to help us manage uh, identity and deal with compliance situations like KYC and AML. So we're very excited about that third model, and it's something that's uh, ongoing research at IOHK, and we'll be making some announcements probably over the summer about partnerships and where and when we can uh, roll out this technology. But we don't anticipate uh, it being put into the Cardano ecosystem until roughly 2018, probably in the middle part of the year. So we have three different models, one that looks like Ethereum, but mostly improved with some new languages and better tools and stronger guarantees of correctness. One of them that is special purpose, designed for low latency, um, small participant populations like games, 
and one that will work on cell phones and laptops to be used for credential management and off-chain activities, namely trusted hardware. Um, the first generation of Cardano, Cardano SL, uh, the, that we're releasing soon, uh, we're calling this Byron, will not support smart contracts natively. Uh, so it is important to understand it's an accounting ledger. It'll allow you to send ADA to people. Once listed on exchanges, you can trade it, uh, and it'll function in many ways just like Bitcoin functions, but obviously much improved because there's been a lot of lessons we've learned over the years. But there won't be smart contract support. The next edition of Cardano will be putting a lot of the foundational infrastructure required for us to wire it up to our smart contract layer, and we're calling that Shelly, and our hope is to have that out by the end of the year. And that's basically going to be finishing off our consensus algorithm, adding sidechain support that we've been developing with several partners, uh, and a whole bunch of optimizations, performance improvements, security enhancements, probably some new signature schemes as well. For example, our hope is to have a uh, post-quantum signature scheme uh, like Bliss or perhaps something else that will give people some, our protocol some hardening against quantum computers. Uh, as well as potentially some better formats for addresses that are a little bit more human readable and potentially support for things like metadata with transactions. Uh, but we'll be releasing that uh, as we get closer to that date, exactly what Shelley will include or not. Um, two final pieces of housekeeping. Uh, people continuously ask us, where is the Cardano white paper? Which is kind of a unique question because Cardano is a large collection of ideas and protocols and we've released several white papers already for particular pieces of technology. So we decided, well, let's at least still write something. And um, I drafted, with the help of many people at IOHK and external collaborators, uh, about a 43-page paper uh, that we've posted on whycardano.com, which explains the philosophical reason and the practical reasons of why we're building Cardano as a group. Uh, the things we're focusing on, things we hope to include in the roadmap over the next few years of, until 2020, uh, and uh, kind of some of the inspiration of where these ideas came from and where we'd like to take them. So I'd highly encourage you to read it, why Cardano has been released today. Uh, and uh, we hope to have it translated into Korean, Japanese, as well as uh, Mandarin Chinese, some point over the next few weeks to months, uh, permitting how long translation takes. It is kind of a large document and a technical document, so please forgive us that we don't have translations available quite yet. It takes a little bit of time to do that. The other question we get is, what is the formal roadmap of Cardano? Now, the challenge behind developing a roadmap is expectation management. Uh, as we've come to learn over the last uh, few months, building out everything to get to Byron, the release of the mainnet, uh, what we wanted to do sometimes was a little harder and a little bit more time consuming than, uh, than we anticipated. So I felt it was necessary for our engineers and our scientists to spend a few months building things so that we could get better at estimating and managing reality. Um, so now we've gotten to a point as a project where I feel that we're in a position to actually start working on and publishing a formal roadmap. My hope is that we can have our Cardano roadmap out in a way that's easy to parse and understand uh, before the end of this month. But it might take a little bit longer, but not much more so. And that should be posted, I believe, at cardanoroadmap.com. Um, and uh, it should be uh, easy to, to translate into multiple languages. So we hope to have both an English version, a Japanese version, and other languages as they, uh, as they are needed so that people can get a clean and clear idea of at least where the project is going to go over the next um, 18 months, all the way until the end of 2018. It's pr very difficult to build a roadmap beyond that because the space moves so quickly. And uh, the longer out we go, the less likely uh, the roadmap will be accurate. Uh, as a final point to that, roadmaps are recommendations and guidelines, but not always are going to be uh, possible to completely get done. So there might be some slippage here and there. Furthermore, there's actually three roadmaps because there are three major pieces of software in Cardano. One is Cardano SL, which is the base layer where ADA lives. Two is Cardano CL, which is where all the smart contract computation occurs. And three is Daedalus, 
which is the actual wallet, which is gradually becoming a multi-wallet that will support many cryptocurrencies and ultimately a lot of the applications that people build. is kind of like an application explorer, an app store, and so forth. So the roadmap that we will publish uh, soon should cover the first two in some degree of detail, uh, Cardano SL and Cardano CL. SL in more detail than CL because we are closer to that release. And uh, shortly thereafter, we'll publish a roadmap for Daedalus and bundle it into uh, CardanoRoadmap.com. The last piece is Cardano Launch. Uh, it's basically a dedicated website we created with checklists of things that need to get done before the mainnet is ready. And if uh, you go there, you'll notice that we're mostly green and we only have a few items left. And so I'm uh, very excited about that. Once everything is green on that list, that means that we are ready to ship the mainnet. Uh, and we'll make some sort of countdown announcement at that point. It means that all the debugging is done, all the features are complete, uh, the testing is done, and we feel pretty confident that the product that we've constructed is going to be pretty good. So thank you all for your patience. Thank you so much for listening. I, uh, it's a really humbling experience to see thousands of people uh, wish us well and uh, work with us from all over the world. And on behalf of the entire team, uh, we've really enjoyed this. We've been... Uh, going pretty much nonstop for a very long time. I've personally traveled to well over 30 countries in the last two years, and a lot of the people on the team have joined me on these trips, and it's been the pleasure of a lifetime to go around and have a chance to see people in person and answer their questions, and uh, I hope I continue to have this opportunity. Uh, okay, so I'll talk about uh, delegation and how, uh, after the mainnet release, we will transition from IOHK operating all of the core nodes to the community operating uh, all of the nodes. So the plan is that initially, uh, when we first launch the mainnet, uh, just to get things bootstrapped, um, so for an initial few months, we will have IOHK operating um, all of the all of the core nodes, the nodes that actually produce the the blocks in the blockchain. Now, obviously, eventually, um, as with ev every other cryptocurrency, it has to be fully distributed. But for the first few months, um, just to get things um, started, as I said, it will be IOHK that that operates the the core nodes. So I just want to say how how it will work to transition from one to the other. So in uh, Ouroboros, which is the protocol that um, uh, the Cardano uh, system is based on, there is a, a system of delegation. Um, and what that means is it's delegating your right as an end user to take part in the protocol. This has nothing to do with your money. Um, when you delegate, you're not, you're not um, giving other people the right to spend your money. That stays with you. But delegation is about um, letting someone else uh, take part in the protocol on your behalf. Now, Ouroboros has that uh, in the system to make the, to make the system more scalable um, because Ouroboros relies on um, at least half of the stakeholders being online at any one time. And so with delegation, that means that, that you don't have to have your desktop on you know, all the time. You can delegate to, to someone else um, who does have a node on uh, all the time. Um, so we will use that delegation system um, during the, the first three months um, where everyone will delegate to um, nodes that are operated by IOHK. Um, and then after uh, those first few months, um, we will then turn that off. We will relax the system. It will go back to the, the default, the default setup, which is that as an end user, you can delegate to anyone or you can run the node run a full node yourself and have other people delegate to you. Um, so during those first few months, we will, we will work with uh, the community and explain how, uh, how to run a, a node that would be online all the time, uh, how the delegation system works, how, to, how other people can delegate to you. Um, but, uh, and so, um, yes, but during, during, so during that time, we'll be working with people to, to get them ready for um, for opening things up. Uh, and then once we flip the switch, um, then over time, uh, the stake will get distributed out to more and more people. 
Um, and so more and more organizations or individuals um, will then be involved in running uh, the core nodes that take part in the, in the core blockchain protocol. Um, so that eventually it will be just like every other um, cryptocurrency that's, that's fully distributed and has no, you know, no control from any one organization. Uh, but the reason that we're doing it this way initially is just so that we have, uh, we can keep an eye initially on how the system is operating and we can have our professional uh, DevOps team um, looking after the, uh, the operations of the, of the core nodes uh, just for the first few months to get things, to get things started. Um, yes, so that's, that's that. Um, let me now uh, hand over to uh, Darko, who will uh, talk about the, uh, the front end and give us a demo. OK, thank you, Duncan. Um, I'm Darko Meech. I'm uh, Daedalus project manager. And I'm here to demonstrate uh, how ADA can be used with Daedalus. Um, as Charles said in the introduction, uh, Daedalus is a cryptocurrency wallet. Uh, currently, we uh, support only for ADA cryptocurrency. Um, support for other currencies is in the works. And soon, we will be launching uh, Daedalus uh, roadmap website with, with much more details. So today, I will be demonstrated, demonstrating wallet creation, uh, wallet backup, also importing test wallets from, uh, from a key, and ADA redemption. So let me share my screen. Um, first of all, I would like to point out that um, there is a Daedalus instructional video posted here on the Cardano Foundation YouTube channel. It was created for Testnet uh, 3 release, and it showcases uh, most of the Daedalus features, like wallet creation, wallet backup, <coughs> and ADA redemption. It also showcases um, download and installation procedures, which I won't be uh, demoing today. So. Here is the Daedalus user interface. And currently, I don't have any wallets. So I am presented with this uh, user interface with a couple of options <coughs> for adding my first wallet. So from this screen, I can create, uh, restore, or import wallet. So first thing I will do, I will import, import a wallet from a key. So uh, here is the import wallet uh, screen, and I can drag a uh, file with the key here, or click to, to choose a file. So I have downloaded the key from Ada Fawcett's website. And I will click Import to import it. And I can also show you uh, the Fawcett website. <clears throat> so this is Ada Fawcett's website, which contains keys that can be downloaded and imported uh, in Testnet 5 version of Daedalus. And these keys contain wallets with data for testing purposes. So I encourage users to use this website and import keys to be able to, to send data and participate in the testnet five features. Uh, the, sorry, participate in the testing testnet five features with, with Daedalus. So to go back to the Daedalus, here is the wallet I imported from the faucet. And it has some money in it. But currently, there are uh, zero transactions. So the next thing I will demonstrate is uh, wallet creation, which also includes uh, wallet backup procedure. So I will go back to this Add Wallet uh, button and then click Create a Wallet. So I will give a name to my wallet and click the button to continue to the next step. So this is a warning message uh, that explains that my wallet backup recovery phrase will be shown on the <clears throat> next screen. And that I need to make sure that nobody is watching, since I need to keep it secure. So also, uh, this dialog is shown for 10 seconds before the button is enabled. So on the next step, when I click Continue, my backup recovery phrase will be shown. And I will quickly uh, write it down, because I will need it uh, in the next step. I'll give me one more second. OK, so I've written my passwords down, and I will click Continue. So now I, 
Now I need to enter words in the same order uh, that were displayed before. Element defy awake. Should I need to go back because I made an error? Okay, so now uh, when I entered my backup recovery phrase and I have it written down, I can click these two checkboxes to to confirm my wallet creation. So uh, this is the empty wallet I've created, um, and before uh, and this this is the wallet summary page. And before I show you other wallet pages and demonstrate how ADA can be sent. Uh, I will first uh, demo how wallet can be restored. So uh, I, have, I have a wallet that I've created and used to send and receive ADA, and I have deleted it from this machine. So I will go again to this add wallet feature, and this time I will choose a restore option. So I have my backup recovery phrase stored, um, and I will paste it in restore my wallet. I will also give a name to this wallet. Uh, and this time around, um, I will set a spending password. So spending passwords can also be uh, set during uh, wallet creation and uh, when importing wallet from your key. So spending password is a new feature introduced in Testnet 5, and it's very important for security. So when spending password is enabled, uh, private keys uh, are stored encrypted on the hard drive. And every time they are needed, uh, spending passwords need to be entered in order to decrypt the private key. So no funds can be spent without this password. So funds are, funds are secure, uh, even if someone takes ownership of the machine uh, where Daedalus is installed. So I will type in my password here. I will use password one. And click the restore, sorry, this restore wallet button. <clears throat> so it is important to know that if spending password is uh, forgotten or lost, the wallet can still be uh, restored with a uh, 12-word recovery phrase, um, and then new password can be set. I'll just wait, wait a second. So now my wallet with all of the addresses and transactions uh, is being restored. OK, uh, here is my restored wallet. And uh, this is the summary page uh, with the list of recent transactions. Um, so these icons indicate if the transaction is incoming or outgoing. And on the right side, we have an um, amount of ADA uh, which was sent or received. And uh, there is this icon with transaction assurance level. And I can also click the transaction in the transaction list to, to expand the transaction details. And here I can see input and output addresses. Uh, and the number of verifications, uh, which is a number, number of blocks uh, in the blockchain after the transaction was included in the blockchain. And on the bottom, the, there is a transaction ID, which can be used to search for the transaction in Cardano Explorer, which is block explorer for Cardano. And Cardano Explorer will be demoed by Ante shortly. So uh, this is the receive screen. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, where the list of my wallet addresses uh, is this, are displayed. And you can notice uh, we have multiple addresses listed here. And that's because we have uh, HD wallets feature, uh, which, is, which was introduced in Testnet 5, which stands for hierarchical deterministic wallets. And to explain uh, HD wallets, um, I would first like to briefly describe how other types of wallets work. So the simplest wallet is a single address wallet which uses a sing single address uh, for storing and receiving money. And there is one private key used for spending money from that address. So this, this is obviously not that great for privacy. The alternative is using uh, multiple addresses for storing money in a wallet. And uh, there is different private key associated with every address. 
So this kind of wallets are basically pools of addresses, and for every address, uh, there is one private key which is needed for spending money. So this kind of wallets require frequent backups, um, since all of the private keys uh, need to be backed up. Uh, if some of private keys are lost, then addresses which hold money uh, cannot be spent, basically. So this means that uh, after every transaction, uh, wallet backup needs to be created. Uh, in Daedalus, we have HD wallets, and uh, that feature improves both uh, privacy and security. With HD wallets, users can generate as many addresses uh, as needed for receiving and storing money. And the wallet is creating the sets of private public key pairs from a single master private key, and only that master private key needs to be kept secure. And in Daedalus, uh, it is backed up using 12-word backup recovery phrase, uh, and we, as we saw when I was uh, creating the wallet. And the, the whole hierarchy of uh, wallet addresses is restored where, when wallet is restored uh, from backup, as we also saw when I was uh, showing how wallet is, wallet is restored. So next I will demonstrate uh, sending money between my wallets. So for that reason, I will go uh, to the wallet I have imported from a key. And I will go to the receive page, and I will generate a new address for, for this transaction. Also, I can reuse existing trans transaction for, for the same purpose. And I will use this uh, button here to copy address to the clipboard. And now I will go to my restored wallet. And I will go to the send form. So this is the send form. Uh, here I can paste in the wallet address. And I can type in the amount of ADA I want to send. And since this wallet has um, spending password enabled, I need to type in that password. After I press the button, uh, the, the, the transaction is now seen in the list of recent trans transactions. I can see the details. So it's currently still not included in any block because it's in the mempool. And if I go to, to the receiving wallet, I can also see that in transaction. So um, the last thing I would like to, to demo is uh, ADA redemption. Uh, here is the ADA redemption icon in the menu. And I, I will actually reload the, the wallet to restart the wallet to, to show you one more feature, which is only shown once per, per session. So wallet is now connecting to the network. And after the wallet is connected, then the blockchain is, is uh, being synced if, if that's needed. It won't be needed right now because the wallet was already running. OK, so I will use the same icon to, to go to the ADA redemption screen. And this is a very important warning, uh, which explains how ADA redemption certificates needs to be kept secure. Because uh, real production certificates can be used to test data redemption on the testnet. Uh, so same certificates will be used for the mainnet, so they need to be kept secure and not shared with anyone. So I will click this checkbox to verify that I understand this warning and click Continue. So um, here is the ADA redemption screen. And um, I'm presented with three tabs uh, with uh, three possibilities for redeeming ADA. So this is the first, first tab. First step is for uh, regular certificates. And this is for users who used uh, ADA voucher vending regime or AVVM to get their redemption certificates. So the next step uh, is for force vended certificates. And this is for users who did not get their certificates during the, the period while AVVM was running and certificates were, were available there. So those users received their certificates encrypted uh, by email. And the last topic for, is for small um, number of users uh, who have um, paper vended uh, certificates. And those are ADA buyers who did not get their redemption certificates from AVVM and who could not be reached by email. So they received their uh, certificates in a paper form. So one paper contained um, shielded or encrypted redemption key. 
and another paper contains nine word uh, passphrase which needs to be entered here to to the, the decrypt that certificate so I will just uh, demonstrate how uh, re redeeming of uh, regular vended uh, certificates works so uh, here uh, here is the box where I can uh, drag and drop my certificate or, or click it to to choose a certificate and I need to choose a wallet where my ADA will be redeemed, and I will click redeem your ADA button. So after a short while, I have this message that my ADA was redeemed as, and the amount of money uh, in the wallet updated. So also here on the summary page, um, redemption transactions uh, transaction should be shown. Uh, but uh, it is delayed for, for a while because there is currently a bug on the testnet which is being uh, fixed. No, that, that will be fixed soon. So this is all I wanted to demo. So I, I will give it, give it back to Duncan. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so next uh, I will uh, hand over to uh, Ante to uh, talk about the Explorer. Okay, thanks. Um, my name is Dante Kegel and I'm manager of the Explorer team. Um, I'm going to showcase the Explorer project right now. Uh, just a second to share my screen. Okay. So, um, on the screen you can see the Cardano Blockchain Explorer. The aim of this application is to provide the way to explore Cardano Blockchain. Cardano blockchain contains history of all transactions that happened in the system. Currently, we are observing testnet network. The aim of testnet network is to provide a facility for users to use the system as if it was a real, but no real money is being spent. Uh, soon, we will launch main network, uh, real money to be spent. Um, on the main page, you will see two sections, less slots, and below is a transaction feed. Um, let's start with transaction feed. So transaction feed contains a list of uh, latest transactions that happened in Cardano network. Uh, here is a transaction ID, uh, then timestamp of the transaction, and the tra transaction amount. Um, if we click uh, on the row, we will navigate to the details of the debt transaction. Uh, we are now on transaction details page. Here we can observe transaction details. Every transaction contains send sender address uh, on the left and a receiver address on the right. Um, if we click to one of the addresses, we will navigate to the address detail page. Um, okay. Uh, we are now on address detail page. See details like um, actual address, uh, number of transactions, and um, final balance of this address. Um, on the bottom, we can see a list of transactions that, was, uh, that were sent to this address or from this address. OK. Um, if, OK, let's navigate to the, to the main page now. Um, okay, um, uh, at, the, at the top we can see less slots table. Um, uh, this table is showing blocks produced by Cardano network. Every row uh, corresponds to one block being produced in the network. Uh, every block will be given an epoch and a slot number. Epoch should change around every five days. Uh, currently in testnet, slot number um, will change every 120 seconds. That means we will see a new block being produced approximately every two minutes in testnet. In mainnet, blocks will be produced approximately three times in a minute. Um, okay, then there are information such as uh, when was this block produced, number of transactions, and others. If you click on the row, we will be navigated to the block details page. 
um, here are some details of this block and at the bottom we can see a list of transactions uh, being made in this block um, okay let's navigate to the home page um, okay at the top uh, we can see a search box um, we, here we can paste transaction ID or address ID and navigate to the details of transaction and address. Um, as Darko showed previously, you can copy the same address ID uh, or transaction ID seen in Daedalus wallet and paste it here in Explorer search box. For example, let me copy this transaction ID and and if I paste it in a search box, and if I click transaction and click search, I will navigate to the transaction details page. I can do the same for address. For example, if I copy, sorry, if I copy this address um, and navigate and copy it here, and click on address, click on search, I will navigate to address detail page. Uh, we can also search blocks by epoch and slot. For example, if I click here, then click on time, um, I can, for example, search epoch four and click search. And now I'm seeing all blocks produced in Epoch 4. Uh, for more detailed search, I can, for example, search Epoch 4 and slot 4, which will filter even more. OK. Um, OK, that would be all. Uh, if you would like to see more information, there is an Explorer tutorial recorded at YouTube uh, you can search Cardano Foundation and click on uh, this tutorial to see more information about the Explorer. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Andre. Uh So I believe that now we're going to do some look at some questions that uh, users have sent in and uh, go through and uh, try and answer them all. Uh, tomorrow, would you like to um, read out the questions and I will either field them myself or pass them on to, uh, to Darko Arante. Sure thing, Duncan. OK, question number one. My screen is stuck at connecting to network. What can I do? OK, so this one, we believe, uh, was mostly happening for people um, who are using uh, the Mac uh, system, Mac installer. Uh, and if, if that's the case, if it was uh, you were having this problem on a Mac, then the answer is that we think we fixed it already. Um, and all you need to do is go and download the uh, the latest, go back to the Daedalus Wallet uh, website and download the latest um, installer and try that again, and that should work. Um, we believe we have uh, fixed that one. Um, if uh, if you have that problem and you're not, on, not using a Mac or you're already using the latest installer from the website, uh, then give us more details, send in a, a more detailed bug report. But as far as we know, uh, that was only happening on Mac and we fixed it. OK, somewhat of a related question. Even after restarting the computer, it's still stuck at connecting to network? So I think the answer is the same here. Um, if you're using a Mac, uh, then the answer is go and, go and get the latest installer, um, because that, that's the behavior that, of, of the bugs um, that we would expect. Um, the re restarting doesn't help. It, it's only getting the latest installer that will help. Um, so again, if you're on a Mac, uh, get the latest installer. Um, if you're seeing that problem and you're not on a Mac, um, send us more detailed information. Okay, okay. there's um, one related bug that I would like to mention. Uh, so sometimes uh, it takes around 40 seconds for the syncing to actually start. That is also one of the bugs that we reproduced and it's being fixed right now. So that can also cause this issue. That's right, yes. But if, if, it's, if it's waiting for more than about 40 seconds, if it's waiting for several minutes, uh, then that would be a, a different problem. Uh, but we're not we're not at the moment aware of any of any problem of it taking more than a few minutes to uh, to sync, except for uh, this issue of of um, the Mac installer, which which has now been been resolved. Okay. Tomorrow, what's the next one? Question three. Um, so computers running Windows Windows 10 or Windows XP, they want to know if they're able to install Testnet five. 
So as Charles mentioned earlier, um, we are providing on Windows only a 64-bit installer. So that means that it will not work on Windows XP, uh, but it will work on, on Windows 10 uh, and indeed, uh, I think, Vista um, and intermediate versions as well. Um, so yeah, it should work just fine on Windows 10, um, and it will not work on Windows XP. OK, question, next question. Why can I not copy and paste the wallet address even when using key commands control C and control V? Uh, Darko, would you like to answer this one? Yeah, sure. Um, I can even show, 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 show my screen quickly. So this is the issue we reproduced on some versions of Windows. Uh, so when users try to select the address and, and use the command uh, key to copy the address, uh, that sometimes does not work. But uh, we also have this uh, copy to clipboard button, which can be used until we uh, resolve the issue. So um, yes, we will we will try and fix that one. Um, but in the meantime, yes, there's that workaround. Mm -hmm. And the issue is not present on, on Mac. OK. Next okay. question. I accidentally deleted the recovery phase documentation. What can I do? Can I still join the test net? Uh, Darko, can I pass this one to you? Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, yes, testnet can be used without the recovery phrase that, that was used previously on testnet 3. And actually, if users try to restore a wallet uh, with the recovery phrase uh, that was used on testnet 3, transactions will, will not be recovered. Basically, a new wallet will be created. Uh, but users can go to the faucet website that I uh, demonstrated and download a key uh, which contains a wallet with money and participate in the, the testing of the testnet file. Users can also use their production uh, ADA redemption certificates to redeem their ADA uh, and also use that uh, for testing the, the, the DDoS wallet with testnet file. OK. Next question. Can testnet 5 be used on mobile devices? OK, the answer to that, as Charles said earlier, is no. We do not yet support a interface on mobile phones. Um, that said, um, at some point in the future, it's in our roadmap to provide a, a user interface on mobile phones. And our, our current architecture uh, will allow for that. Um, it's it perhaps interesting to know that when you are running uh, Deadless on your, on your laptop or desktop, what's actually happening is that there is a, a full node that is being run in the background that takes part in the, in the protocol and talks to all the other nodes in the world. Uh, and then there's also then the user interface, the bit you actually see. Um, and so our architecture, therefore, allows in future to have the node running somewhere, maybe your desktop, maybe in the cloud, and then a different uh, user interface uh, would run on your mobile phone. Because we do not want to run a full node on your mobile phone. That would not be uh, a sensible idea. But if the, if the full node runs somewhere else, and the user interface would be able to run on a mobile phone. It, it won't be exactly the same as the, as the current Daedalus um, uh, desktop uh, application, but we, we will at some point in the future uh, make a, um, uh, a mobile uh, user interface. Uh, but not yet. So the, the current version does not does not run on mobile phones. OK. What is the minimum and maximum amount of ADA per transaction? For example, one user was stating, when I try to send a million ADA, it doesn't work. Is there a maximum amount I can send? OK, well, let me answer the minimum and then the maximum. So the minimum. Um, so the minimum, I believe, and Darko can correct me, is um, in ADA, it is uh, one with, with five zeros in front of it. So there is, there is a minimum, but it's the smallest possible amount that uh, can be expressed. So it's a very, very small amount is the minimum. But uh, in the mainnet release, there will also be transaction fees. So every transaction has to pay the fee plus whatever is actually being transferred. So in some sense, the minimum will be the fee plus um, 0. 0.00001. Um, now, the fees, the reason for the fees um, is because, well, two reasons. One is uh, ultimately to support the cost of the network operators, although during the, the first few months when IOHK are controlling all the nodes, um, we will not be charging fees, uh, not, uh, not, at least not for, not for that purpose. Um, or rather, IOHK will not be collecting those fees. Um, but fees do still have to be um, paid uh, for all transactions because 
um, of the problem of distributed denial of service attacks. We need to ensure that um, if someone is trying to attack the network and, and flood the network with far too many uh, small, useless transactions, that they bear a cost for that. Um, so that someone trying to attack the network has to pay uh, a cost. And that will um, reduce the incentive to, to try and uh, attack the network. So unfortunately, uh, for all of us who want to use it, there does have to be fees for this reason to, to protect the network. Um, so that will effectively, the fee is the, is the minimum uh, transaction size uh, effectively. On the maximum side, uh, the intention is that there is no maximum fee. Oh, sorry, there is no maximum transaction. Um, so you can transfer um, as much as you, you like, as much as you have. Um, there was a bug to do with um, uh, transferring over 1 million ADA. Uh, Darko, perhaps I can ask you to just explain about that bug and, and uh, what's yes. going on with it. Mm -hmm, sure. Uh, so um, first of all, I, I would like to add that uh, the minimum unit uh, in ADA, uh, so ADA, uh, 1 million uh, part of ADA is called uh, Lovelace. It's similar to the Satoshi in Bitcoin. So maybe that, that will be interesting to know. Uh, and yeah, uh, we, we had a uh, validation issue, so not, nothing serious on the front end, which prevented sending more than uh, 1 million uh, ADA. And total maximum number of ADA that, that can ever be sent is, the, I believe, 45 million, which is the, all of the ADA that will be ever created. So to be clear, that bug, um, which is in the current uh, versions that people are using, that bug has already been fixed internally, and it will be um, fixed for users in the next uh, release. Yes, as soon as we release new installers, uh, the fix for that bug will be included there. OK. OK. Final question. If I don't have a certificate, how can I join Testnet 5? Um, so maybe I can uh, pass this uh, to Darko, because Darko was describing earlier the, um, the, the faucet system. Um, so Darko, perhaps you could just explain again clearly what the, uh, what the faucet system uh, does and what it allows people to do. Uh, OK, sure. So as I already mentioned, there is, there is a, a faucet website uh, which contains uh, keys that can be imported in DDoS. And that is very common for every cryptocurrency test, test network. So that is basically uh, money made for uh, testing purposes that can be imported and, and used for, for testing in DDoS. And again, users can always um, use their certificates if they are ADA buyers and redeemed ADA with their uh, production certificates that, that, that will be used uh, when, mainnet, uh, when mainnet is launched. So it means that a user can go and pick up uh, a wallet, and the wallet will have some arbitrary amount of money in it, and they can use that for, for testing purposes. Yeah, that's true. There are wallets with um, more or less money. Uh, so the, 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 their, their wallets with uh, three, three, three uh, sorts of um, money. It, it, yeah, so they, they can be downloaded through the faucet website, and users will be awarded a, a random a number of uh, test data for testing. And so that means anyone, anyone at all can, can take part in, in that kind of testing, uh, in addition uh, to those people who bought uh, ADA who can use their certificates to, to redeem that way. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So there, there are. Uh, 12,000 uh, keys available on, on uh, Ada Fawcett website. OK. Is that all the questions? Yep. Yeah, that's everything. OK. Well, um, thank you very much. Um, tomorrow, would you like to uh, wrap up? OK. Yep. Thanks for everybody. Uh, thanks to everybody for being here. Um, Mainnet will be launching soon, so stay tuned for that, and we will have more of these broadcasts periodically throughout the months. So uh, keep an eye out for that. And if you have any questions, of course, please submit them to the community channels, and we will answer them as quickly as possible for you. Uh, we're, we're looking for a 24-hour turnaround time to answer, to answer all of your questions. So please um, submit your questions as they come up. OK. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Bye. guys. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you.